Hey guys, I'm The Philosopher and welcome to the Console Explosion Podcast. This is where I sit down with other members of the nerd community and talk about topics that are either interesting or important to me. Today there's three main topics. The first one being tabletop news with a Lord of the Rings tabletop game being made. I'm a big fan of Lord of the Rings and I am very interested in tabletop games. Haven't played them in years, but I want to get back into it. So this might be the game for me. Next topic is the new multiplayer 5 to the 13th game. Yep, we have a new Jason Voorhees style game coming out where you can play as either Jason or the camp counselors and you try to slaughter them. Third topic is about Sony. Yep, we're talking about Sony once again. We're very interested in the future of consoles. It's something that we're very passionate about as many of the people that join this podcast are people who've been playing video games since they've been born, since the Nintendo, the Atari. So we sit down and talk about the new news on the PlayStation Pro and what we think of that. As always, we'd love to know what you guys think, so leave your comments down below, and thank you guys so much for watching. How's it going, guys? Welcome to the Console Explosion podcast. We were talking a little bit about Mass Effect Andromeda a minute ago since it has something to do with one of our topics tonight, which is PlayStation 4 Pro. We'll get to that in a little bit. We also are going to talk a little bit about the Jason Voorhees game, the Friday the, Friday the 13th game that's coming out that was crowdfunded. Uh, but first, we have Alex, and he wanted to talk about uh, something I, I think is kind of cool. Um, which is some some tabletop RPG information. Uh, I'll let him go ahead and explain that real quick for you. All right, so a brief little thing. Um, most people who are familiar with fantasy liter- literature or have watched movies in the past few years may know about this little thing called The Lord of the Rings. Um, so there is a... And there have been longtime fans of tabletop role-playing games who've been trying to adapt Lord of the Rings stuff to Dungeons & Dragons and... It even for a while had its own role-playing game, first back in the 80s with Middle-Earth role-playing, and now with the, and now currently there's a role-playing game out there called The One Ring, put up by a company called Cubicle 7. We have, they currently have the rights to use pretty much most of the Lord of the Rings books for tabletop role-playing materials. They have the rights to the original trilogy and The Hobbit and the appendices. I don't think they have the Cimmerillion yet. Um, and it brings up because it turns... It's been learned through... An announcement of a product which just came out today that they don't just have like the rights to make their own Middle Earth role playing game. Um, they have rights to do any role playing game material that they want with it. And so recently, well, today they just released the first of two source books adapting Middle Earth to Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Um, this is kind of a big deal because there has been a long history of trying to do Middle Earth related material in Dungeons and Dragons when. D&D first came out, the original white booklets. Um, halflings weren't called halflings, they were called hobbits. In some of the earlier editions of the, the Monster Manual, um, treants were called ents, for example, and several other things. And in later revisions, TSR, they got sued by the Tolkien, by the Tolkien estate, and they were forced to change the name of the, of the ents and changed the name of the Hobbits. They managed to prove that orcs as a concept were in the public domain, so they were able to keep that. And oh, and since then, D and D and and Middle Earth have been two separate things. But now we have getting officially licensed Lord of the Rings novel based material that you can play in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, you can run adventures in Middle Earth. You can run characters that thematically fit into Middle Earth. Um, Cubicle Seven, the publisher, has redone the classes for Dungeons and Dragons to make them fit more thematically with what you see in the Lord of the Rings books. And I've read some of Cubicle Seven stuff before. I own cop- several copies of the of their uh, books for the um, Doctor Who role playing game that they put out, and. They put out really good stuff, and this caught my attention because it's 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 kind of getting two things back, getting Middle Earth and D and D back together again after years and years apart. And so, 
Uh, I put a link in the group chat. Hopefully they'll go up in the main chat or the show notes. It's definitely something worth checking out. Um, it's available on PDF through drivethroughrpg.com. Cubicle Get 7's website also has the uh, a print version available as well if you want a physical dead tree book. It, I definitely recommend checking out. Sounds good. I, I've talked about it before. I actually may possibly be getting back into tabletop RPGs casually, or if that is such a thing. Uh, so that's actually kind of cool, because I, I do love Lord of the Rings. I have been streaming Shadow of Mordor here and there. Uh, yeah, Shadow of Mordor. And I did really like d and It was one of the first tabletops I really got into. It's one of the OGs of tabletops, from what I understand. So that's... I don't know. That's kind of cool. I mean, I'm sure there was like some some fan made ones, but this is kind of an official thing. So I'm excited to see where this goes. I don't know if anybody else here is interested or plays tabletop games, but I think that's really cool. Does anybody else here play tabletop games? I always wanted to. Do it. Do it right now. <laughs> I Go. I can't. I need I need pe- I need people who are willing to play. No, just. Kidnap them all. Do what Ian did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that will work. Yeah, yeah um, that sounds good. Right? Tie, 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 chain them up, chain them up, and like, hey, you're gonna play as Gandalf. I will play as um, <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> he, he, he he can be Malfoy. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, okay. if, you go, if you go to your local game store, the general advice for people who are, if you're interested in tabletop role playing, you're looking for a group. Um, three good ways to go to go to find a group. Find a local tabletop store that sells role playing game stuff. Um, usually they have a bulletin board or something there for people who are looking for groups. Um, even though just the internet's a thing now, I, I so I hear. It may just be a passing fad. Um, the there, there's that's still like a common way for finding people who are want to play D&D or other tabletop role-playing games in your community who are geographically nearby. Usually they're also... Pro- number second way, usually there will be like in your area a couple meetup groups or something like that for people who are into tabletop role-playing or maybe a locally-oriented Facebook group or something like that. That's a good way to find people in your area who are looking for groups. And they'll be posting, okay, what they're looking for, what game they're playing... Maybe some additional information on stylistically what the concept of the game is, whether it's like your Conan style sword and sorcery thing, or maybe something more serious, really more heroic like Lord of the Rings or whatever. And the third way is if you have a tabletop role playing convention near you, this is this is the way that costs a little money because you have to pay to get to get in, as with most conventions. But at a local tabletop role playing convention, and again, if you check online, you should be able to find one near you. There will be people who will be running one shots at the convention, and some of the people will also be looking for groups. So, if you, as a good way to try out a GM or try out players or that sort of thing and meet people for the first time. Actually, technically, a fourth way there's a thing called D. If you just want to get into like D&D, there's a thing called D&D Encounters, which is an outgrowth of an old thing called the RPGA, and it's a organized play thing, sort of like Friday Night Magic or whatever. Mm-hmm. And this is just D&D in specific. It, they use most D and D encounters groups have encountered. They, no pun intended. They tend to do something like weekly or bi-weekly or sometimes monthly. They'll usually do it at a gaming store. It usually be like during the day or maybe the afternoons on a weekend or something like that. And that's another good way to meet up with players. And some of these people also have their own separate groups aside from D and D encounter stuff. And it mm-hmm. gives you a way to learn the rules for D and D and get playing with a steady, steady or semi-steady group. And that's another good way. Yeah, that's definitely true. If you are if you have the time to commit to playing it, it's actually really fun if you're curious about it and you're okay with role-playing. It feels a little awkward at first, but after a while, you do get used to it. It's it's really fun. It's fun to to, to let loose every now and then. And, and Lord of the Rings, Legolas, man, man crush. I admit it. I'm not ashamed. I would love to play... Like, as a Legolas like character, don't judge me. Don't judge me. And welcome to anybody. I, I'm in the show. <laughs> Why do you gotta judge me? Why do you have to judge me? I'm sorry. Oh, I, I am very much judging you right now. Look at that hair and yes. look at his skills with the swords and the bow and tell me that's just not awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm still judging you. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you know, all the times it's, it's, it's just not a judge-free zone. I don't know what. You're <laughs> <laughs> about the time commitment thing, the thing with D&D Encounters is most of the adventures for D&D Encounters are like a one and done and, and one night thing. And so there's not as much of a time commitment of, oh, I'm going to be with a steady group of people and we're going to be going to so-and-so's house every Friday night or whatever. It doesn't have the same degree of commitment. So if you if stuff comes up or you can't make it or you have to work extra hours or work on a regular basis because of the holiday season and you work retail, D&D Encounters is a pretty good way to kind of drop in and drop out of a group without having to worry about, oh, I'm going to miss a whole bunch of story, or, oh, the group's going to rely on me to be there, or that sort of thing. I need right. to raise this guy's magic skill by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the memories. You do create some good memories. And, and speaking of D&D, &D, I just want to mention this because I can't mention it enough. Go watch Stranger Things if you have Netflix. Fantastic. Uh, I have not seen that. Fantastic Can you show. give me a premise of that show? Okay, so I will do my best. Uh, it starts off. Remember, with... you're trying to sell me that. Tell me that, because I wanna, okay. I wanna be sold on that, because I've heard good things, but I don't know what it is. <sighs> I will try my best to do this. It's an so. internet show. No, you're fired. Uh... It's, on, it's on Netflix. It's internet. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's 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 sponsored by Netflix essentially. It's on Netflix. It's mainly where you can find it. You can find it elsewhere. So I hear, but it's on Netflix. But it's a show that takes place in the '80s. It's a very, very great kind of mystery, scary sort of uh, thriller TV show where you have this monster that has kidnapped this this kid who's part of like a, a friend, a, a band of four kids. And what one of the many things I love about it is it's very, very much 80s with the music. It has that cool 80s style synth music. Uh, all the actors are phenomenal, but you have these kids we're trying to find their missing friend. They know something nefarious has happened, but they are just kids, so they can't figure out what to do. And you have this mystery girl who kind of pops up, and she has these strange powers, and you don't exactly know where she's from. And so they kind of band together to start looking for this missing kid. And all along the way, other people are missing. Things along the city are happening. There's conspiracies going on. And it's just really very interesting multiple storylines because there's more than just those kids uh, that are in it and you have all these uh, segmenting storylines going on at once to make this very very interesting compelling storyline and I, I, I feel like I can't do a good enough job of explaining how great this show is but at the same time I don't want to hype it up because I know what it's like to watch something that's hyped up and then watch it and feel disappointed but I really feel like this show did a good job of feeling creepy keeping you guessing, keeping you engaged, and really helping you connect with the characters because they all act so well. Like, even though they might have different features because all the characters have flaws to them, there's no perfect character, but I think every single one, by the end of the show, you will like them for the most part. And it's very rare for me to like a TV show outside of superheroes. Like, I can forgive <laughs> superhero shows because, you know, suspension of disbelief, but this is um, something different. And I don't like a lot of scary shows, or scary movies. So I think this did a great job of really keeping me wanting to watch it, really, until the very end. Like, I, I watched it in, like, two or three days. It was ridiculous. What do you mean only shows about superheroes? What What about Game of Thrones? That's not about superheroes. That's an exception. That's an exception. What is this Game of Thrones that you speak of? It, it, I'm not even going to talk it's about a, that. <laughs> it's a show about tits and, and dicks, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> and butts. Oh, there is a lot about this. It doesn't sound like it's something I would enjoy. Yeah. Sorry. Penis, 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 <laughs> penis, penis. Oh my god. Oh, I, I know that song. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, know that song. They, they have a whole orchestra in that scene, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember yes. that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, yeah. So that was Game of Thrones, huh? What about Breaking Bad? Did you see that? That's not about superheroes. <laughs> I watched the uh, three seasons. I did watch it. it. It's very seldom. I mean, there are shows out there that I do watch, but it's few and far in between. Mr. Robot is another one. Um, Mr. Robot and the Stranger Things are the show for the shows for 2016 to watch. How many seasons are there? I disagree. Two plenty, seasons of Mr. Robot. There's plenty of other shows you can watch. And My Little it. Pony ain't one of them. How, how do you know that's what I was looking at? Because that's exactly what you're looking at. You're always looking at that. <laughs> okay, no. No, oh, no besides that, you got Bojack the Horseman, which... Oh, that's, yes. oh, that's a great I, show. It's yeah, a fucking um, amazing it, show. 
I, at first, I didn't, I didn't. To be honest, I don't like the animation that much. But if I just ignore it and just listen to, to the show, it's great. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another another one that I actually, that. another one I kind of like is F is for Family. Oh, it's a fun, yeah, it's a great show. The problem is that there's only one season. Exactly. Um, and it's like like six episodes only. So, but it's so worth it. It's no, so worth it to oh, watch yeah. it and watch oh, it again. Yeah, but I, I want to see more. That's my problem. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never seen that show. It's great. Netflix originals. Like, I have to say, Netflix is doing an amazing job with their originals. Um, mm. There's another one that's coming out that's a Netflix original that's coming out that I saw that I'm fucking got a heart on for, and I can't remember what it is. There's Luke Cage, The Defenders, Daredevil, Punisher, <laughs> um, and Iron Fist, and Jessica Jones. I've actually started watching Jessica Jones. It's not a bad show. It's not a bad show. It's not fantastic, but it has. It, it's actually really interesting. The only thing good about that show is the fact they got the guy from Doctor Who. David Tennant? Yeah, he does a great job in that show. But getting back on topic with scary stuff... Um, <laughs> A game I am curious about. I won't say I'm excited for it because I am jaded and I've played way too many games and I worked at GameStop for too long. But it looks interesting and entertaining is the Friday the 13th game. Uh, <laughs> On yeah. Nintendo? No, Fire, not again. the NES one, though. Well played. Oh. No, the oh. multiplayer Friday the 13th game. So uh, the new one that's coming out. Okay, let me give a little backstory to this because I've I followed you. it quite a bit. So, um, you are the horror expert here. I yes, I love my horrors. <laughs> I mean horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> love those horror. Movies. Uh, okay, those so horror movies are amazing. The Friday Thirteenth game is is a game that is made as a Kickstarter game, and it came out, and I backed it because um, it's being done or the story, quote-unquote, if you could say there's a story, is being written with the... has the full say of the original creator of Friday the 13th, which is Sean S. Cunningham. Now, for you people who know Sean S. Cunningham, he made Friday the 13th Part 1, and then he came back and did Friday the 13th, The Final Friday. But for my respect towards the man is very little because Sean S. Cunningham pretty much is an idiot when it comes to the Friday 13th series. He was in an interview and stated that the story should not revolve around Jason Voorhees and that the mask is the stupidest thing that he could ever have. So coming from a movie that has 11, 12, 12 movies in the series. Uh, are we uh, counting 10? Yeah, 10, and then... Okay. Uh, and it's a very fun one, come on. Uh, part I... 11 technically being uh, J Freddy versus Jason, and then the <laughs> 12th one being the remake, and then now another one being done, which is mm. to reboot the series again. Uh, what so am I seeing it? Reboot. Um, and then a sequel to that one. So they got two more on the way. But anyways, they have Sean S. Cunningham with the story and giving all the rights up to this. They have Tom Savini who did the makeup for Friday the 13th part one and has done some of the greatest horror movie makeups ever in anything from dust till dawn, from you name it, uh, dawn of the dead, the original. He's done a lot of makeup. He's a master in that he's doing the kills and coming back to do a lot of the artwork and a lot of the, motion cap for Jason. They also have Kane Hodder, who played Jason in Friday 13th, 7, 8, 9, and 10. He's come back to play Jason um, in this movie, which is fantastic as well. So you have the probably what everyone calls the greatest Jason ever. Now, what makes him the greatest compared Just to the others? He's a former stunt uh, stuntman, so he could do a lot of his own stunts as well, instead of having a, someone else step in to do the stunts, so he could take a lot of more damage, he could do a lot more, he's just a hulking individual, he really made Jason his own. Um, his well, one, own. More, one more thing beyond that, uh, I, I agree with the, the stuntman being able to do a lot of stuff himself, Kane Hodder having sat and watched a whole bunch of, of the Friday the 13th movies with some friends over beers, Kane Hodder, there's a way he moves as mm -hmm. Jason, which 
gives Jason a lot more character than some of the other people who played Jason. Not that they weren't good at playing Jason or didn't do a good performance, but the way he plays the character, the way he moves, the way he tilts his head, and that sort of thing, gives the character a little something extra that and a little more real sense of character and makes him more of a character than just a presence. Um, Jason, in the earlier movies, to a certain degree, outside from how he's written, could be... You could, you could drop Michael Myers from the, from the Halloween movies in there and it'd be effectively the same film. But because of how Kane Hodder plays the character, how he moves, how he walks around, all the body language elements that he brings to the role adds a little bit to make him... to make Kane Hodder's Jason feel distinct and unique. And I think the biggest thing is, is like when you had him from 7 to 8, it was the first time there was consistency between the Jasons, right? You had a different player playing Jason almost every other time. So, you know, it, it's good to see him come back. So anyways, they've done this Kickstarter, they raised a shit ton of money, and now they're making the game. Um, the game, hands down, looks amazing. But there's also a game out now that's kind of taking that steam away, which is Dead by Daylight, which is you play a serial killer, you kill four people, they have to fix generators to get out of a small map, blah, blah, blah. Great game, whatever. It is what it is. Friday 13th, you have a team of eight counselors, all different people, different styles that come from technically movie archetypes. Um trying to flee Jason in Camp Crystal Lake. You have to either fix a, a boat engine or fix a truck, find parts or pieces, um, hide from Jason, um, and which is really cool. It's awesome, and you have a huge map to do this in. My only gripe with it, and this is where I'm totally turned off of the whole game, is the mechanics of Jason, is the fact that you can teleport from to any point in the map. So you can figure out, oh, you can see a, you're at the top northwest of the map, and oh, look, there's someone on the bottom southwest. You can teleport down there to him and kill him. You know, I, I do want to add on, and they might have changed it since I last heard about it, because I tried to follow this as well, but that mechanic is limited to if he is not seen. Um, he, he can only teleport to where they're not within uh, sight of one of the players. So he, he can't from what I understand, this might be different from what I from what I know, but I was under the impression that you can't just teleport right behind somebody or anything like that. It has to be like outside of their line of sight or something weird. Either way, um, technically, yes, Jason has a teleport ability. If you say that, and Jason takes Manhattan because he fucking shows up everywhere in that for some oh, reason. Yeah. He's boom there yeah. and then gone and boom there and then that one was just a stupid movie. <laughs> Or for that matter, there is Jason's ability to move around his victims easily without being detected in a way to freak out people the most. Which I, I hope there's a mechanic in the game that replicates that, where you can basically set up your victims or conceal your victims in a way where to either put people at ease or off their edge um, until you want them to get freaked out, like you see in a lot of the Jason movies. There's some pretty brutal ways to kill people. It's kind of awesome. Yeah, but that's not brutal ways to kill people. But they're like, there's always like in the Jason movies, the scene toward the end where in the last couple survivors, where they don't just stumble across like one or two people killed, but like they stumble across all the people who've been killed and not where they were killed, but somewhere else. Ah. Uh. Clearly set up in a way to freak the person out and get them to panic and to make mistakes. Hmm. Hmm. Well, there is a panic um, mechanic in it is you play certain characters, some of them aren't as riled as others, so that they can last longer and their psyche is better, they have a better and longer psyche. Some who are like the nerds are going to survive longer than the jocks because the jocks won't. Again, there's that mechanic in the game. So there is that ability, and that also comes in when you're hiding from Jason, hiding under the bed, hiding in closets, wherever, right? Because you start whimpering or making noise or peeing your pants or whatever the case is, right? But um, I know Antonio was going to jump in and say something before I cut him off. Sorry. Oh, I, I can remember. What, uh, what were we talking about? Jason Part 8, when I said he has that ability to teleport everywhere. Hmm. <laughs> that was something before that, but I forgot. Oh. Let's go ahead. Well, anyways, that's what happens. But that's the only mechanic I hate of the game. I think it's stupid. Um, I, it's not in character of him in my opinion. 
Um, mm-hmm. I think he, it should be more of a stock and killer game like um, Dead by Daylight. But again, it is what it is, I guess. They're going to put it in there. I just think it's just a stupid way to make it easier it's, to be the killer. So what? not out of the character. Have you not played the, the, the NES one? He is fucking everywhere. At the same time, so he has to tell. Us yeah, but you know he's going to be there in the any any on the NES one when the zombies start running away from you. So well, when they what, start no, but, running away from you, you follow. Them. So let me let me ask this though: What would you have Jason do in in place of the teleportation? Stalk him, make him move a little faster when not being seen and or heard by the counselors, so he can move faster through the forest or move faster in a concealed area. And then go into stock mode, which is how he stalks and kills them, compared to just a teleporting from one point, teleport right behind the person and kill them. It's just, it's not, it's just, it, to me, it's just, it's a flawed mechanic, and it's just gonna take the, it's just gonna take the fun out of it. I'm not I, saying I, I, I'm not saying I disagree, but when, in what movie has Jason really like moved fast? Besides that remake that they did somewhat recently. Well, I want to get the remake. Really. Yeah, it, 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 Jason is like Jason even more than say um, again Michael Myers as far as the iconic slasher, unstoppable juggernaut slasher killers go. Are like two, he's like the big one of the. I'm walking at a steady, at, at what appears to be a steady normal pace, but I'm still going faster than you can run. Because mm-hmm. I mean, you have to think about it. The guy is technically six foot nine. His stride is a hell of a lot bigger than our stride. Right, well, so he's going to be moving faster than what we can. Plus, for the fact that yes, he does move quicker in part seven. He apparently teleports in part nine. He moves hella fast in part er, in part no, sorry, part seven, part eight. He teleports. Part nine, he moves really fast. Part ten, he fucking floats around in space. Part one, he wasn't in. Part two, he ran. Part three, he ran at the end. Part four, he was more of a hulking, just tank type uh, character. Part five wasn't even him. Part six, he was a zombie, so technically, yeah, he can move faster. Hmm. Freddy versus Jason, he had that ability to just teleport wherever. Um, Part uh, the remake, he ran as well. Yeah, I remember that one, because I was really young when I watched the older one, so... Huh. That's really interesting. Yep. How do you think the game's going to do? I think the game's going to rec- I think the game's going to do all right. Um, I just think some of the steam has been taken out of the, or some of the wind has been taken out of their sails um, for Dead by Daylight. I think people are going to get tired of that, and then when Friday Thirteenth comes out, they're already going to be like, eh, about it. I mean, the same thing happened when most of us bought um, Dead Realm, played it, and we're done with it after Tyler screamed like a little girl. We haven't <laughs> been back to it since. Well, I, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> I said something my name. I was like, what? <laughs> Dead Realm, the game that made you scream. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I think what, what the, the license may help this game a bunch. We'll see. As far as what might give it a little extra kick. Um, it helps it keep going aside from um, Dead by Daylight. Um, depends on also the variety of environments, that sort of thing. As far as the teleport thing goes, if they give it like a cooldown, or not even a cooldown, but like, okay, you can only use the teleport like three times per match, so you have to make it count. That could make it interest, make it mm. interesting. Yeah, they limit it. Yeah. Um, I didn't see a release date for this game just yet, but I'm assuming it's going to come out sometime around Halloween. Uh, the release, I have the release date here. Sorry, let me... Shipping October t- 2016. Okay. So, yeah, run Halloween time. I kind of figured as much it would be stupid to do it any other time. Um, yeah. I, I agree with what you're saying about the the losing steam. I wonder, though, I, don't, I haven't played Dead by Daylight. I don't know how popular it is right now. I don't have the stats on that. But it also could be possible that they could... For people who are still hungry for that style of game but want this, that might be uh, in their favor to to have the genre already out and know what it's like and then switch over to this game that has kind of that, I don't want to say Pokemon Go sort of thing, but it has that nostalgia because you're familiar with the storyline already and they tried really heavily to stick to 
influences from the movie going as far as getting the original actor that played Jason to be the mocap actor for Jason in the game. So it, well, it's, it's more than getting the original actors. Getting the original actor, Tom Savini did all the makeup and kill effects in the first one. So you have the original um, FX crew, and then you also have the original director slash writer of the of it as well. So, I mean, you're getting pretty much the original people coming back, plus Kane Hodder being stepped in, which is amazing. Um, so it, it, with what they've done with the license as a licensed game, Mm -hmm. uh, movie to game franchise, this is going to, in my opinion, really step up, hopefully step up uh, movie video games. That's a great point. I hope that is, I hope that is the case. I hope that is the case so much. You don't even know. Mm. Because it would be cool to play some halfway decent movie games Mm -hmm. other than stuff like Spider-Man sometimes. Mm -hmm. Uh, It would be nice to see some makings of games as well. I can't think of any off the top guys, of my head. Did you guys play uh, uh, Alien Isolation? No, but I heard it was okay. I heard, it was... I, I heard Alien Isolation was really good. Um, also, I really enjoyed uh, Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay. Mm. Which the, the Escape from Butcher Bay is technically lore. It's movie lore to the first one. Yeah. So you have to, if you play the game and then watch the movies, it all ties in. Like they did a good job with that game, hands down. I agree. Like that is one of the best ones. Alien Isolation. I don't really know if you can tie that in. It feels like it feels like it's kind of like shoehorned in in a way, um, because I don't know. I've played some of it. I haven't really got through most of it, so I don't have a lot of the backstory of how X Y Z comes together. But uh, it is a good game, Alien Isolation, because I love the Alien series. You want to have a whole podcast, I could talk about Alien 1 through 4. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, 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 I bought the game. The problem is that I don't know how, uh, how good is it is. Thematic- it's like game of the year. Yeah. Thematically, it fits really well with the tone of the first movie. Mm-hmm. In terms of the alien isn't something you fight in massive numbers like in Aliens or... Alien Colonial Marines. Marines. Um, it's something that you hide from. It's something that you run from. If you take on the alien head to head, you're gonna die, and you're not gonna die in a nice way. Mm. And they do a really good job of when you get killed in the game. They make it a freaky, scary, intense moment. Not just like a jump scare, but like a really, like oh god, you you, you are scared leading up to the moment where you. Where, where the alien gets you, and then you get that, that scare there as well. There's a question, how many aliens are there? Is there one. one primary one? Okay. There's only one. There's okay. only one. I, was, I was making sure, because that's all I know about the movie, that there's only one alien in the first one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. all I know. Now it's all the movie. It's sort of a Clock Tower sort of game, or Amnesia. Oh, I love oh, Clock Tower. Clock Tower's Clock a Outlast. really good comparison. Oh, yeah. which which Clock Tower? The one on Super Famicom, PS1, or the Clock Tower 3? Speaking metaphor- metaphorically here. The genre yeah. oh. of hide and, hide and slash. Yeah, <laughs> run and hide. Yeah, run and hide or get slashed, mm-hmm. exactly. But no, like the, the Alien Isolation is a great game. I just, I have a hard time picturing Ripley's daughter fighting an alien and how the alien get to here and nobody knows about it and blah, 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 blah. I really liked, okay, and I'm probably going to get fucking hate mail for this. I like Colonial Marines. I thought it was great in the sense of the story. I thought they did a good job being part of the lore. I think it was, yes, shittily done for what Gearbox did. Shame on them for fucking taking people's money and taking the, you know, Fox's money and taking Sega's money and releasing a piece of shit like they did and taking all those funds and putting it towards Borderlands and making Borderlands a great game. You know, shame on them for doing that. I mean, if they put half of what they, the money they stole from Sega and stole from Fox, Colonial Marines would have been amazing. But, you know, it was a good game in the sense of the story I still think that there could have been a lot more just for the fact that they just fucking started shoehorning shit in at the end because they fucking spent all the money and they had to get it done. Yeah. You know, and that's another thing where it comes to, you know, 
we with Kickstarter, and now we've had this conversation before, but we as people who fund money to Kickstarter don't hold these companies accountable for, and they don't produce. I think the Friday the 13th Kickstarter is probably the first Kickstarter that I see is going to produce a game mm. on time and give everyone that they've, um, for each one of the reward levels, give each person what they actually paid for. I'm still waiting for my physical copy for fucking Mighty Number no. 9. No, so fuck I'm... them and fuck what's that, whoever the creator of Mega Man and all that it, fucking it, it, thing. It, 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 it. Yeah. I, I will. I will slightly disagree on this point. As someone who backed Shadowrun Returns, um, everyone on that got what they paid for, uh, and the game that we got, I would say, lived up to expectations. Both in terms, the campaign, the original campaign, the Dead Man Switch campaign was a little eh, but the it also promised a very robust set of um, campaign and, and mission development tools, which is great. And the expansions that we that you got for that, if you backed the Kickstarter, like um, the Berlin uh, expansion, were fan freaking tastic. So, what was the time frame from the end of the Kickstarter to production? Um, a year and a half. A year uh, and a half. Yeah, a year and a half or so. I it's been a while. I um, mean, that game has been out for that game itself has been out for years. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of good games that have come out on Kickstarter, like, like Freedom Planet, stuff like that. There, I think you might have had some bad experiences. Oh, and Jimin but... Two, the Wii production mm-hmm. card. And, um, for that matter, <laughs> Kickstarter's worked out also really well in the tabletop RPG space. Like oh, this yeah. bad boy right here was kickstarted. And also led to another game, which really hasn't come out yet. That's been kick, that's been kickstarted in terms of video game with a Torment Tides of Numenera. Um, mm. So the the well, first of all, nobody knows what Shadowrun is. So <laughs> poop on that. <laughs> nobody plays tabletop games. Poop on that. Mm. And Freedom Planet is just the freaking clone of Sonic. Yes, but a good clone of Sonic. It. What's the I mean, last time we got a good Sonic game? <laughs> and, and matter, as far as like the Shadowrun up game, was like what, Shadowrun was like one of wasn't the first high profile, um, kickstarted video game, but it was up there, um, mm-hmm. and like even for people, I was putting aside the tabletop role playing game fans of Shadowrun, the SNES and Genesis versions with a very strong um, fan base. I love the Genesis one. Yep. I, I, I like them both for different reasons. Um, and I think that helped a lot for, for getting that game funded. It's not just, oh, the tabletop role-playing fans who were like, oh, yeah, um, I, I want to see a Shadowrun PC game that's good, as opposed to the only other Shadowrun PC game we got, which was the first-person shooter. The less said about that, the better. Um, but also, even the Genesis and the uh, SNES version fans were into this because they wanted to see a good Shatterin video game again, and we even got a whole bunch of nice little Easter eggs thrown into the uh, video, the um, Shatterin Returns as well. Like the guy, your first team um, runner you get with you on the team is the guy from Shatterin from Shatterin for the SNES, who still likes to hang out in the morgue. I actually really love the shooter for 360. I played the hell out of that game back in the day. It was super fun. I thought it was a good game. People played that game until the servers went down on Xbox Live. So, I, uh, uh, good times, good times. I played some many and late nights playing that game. Even though I didn't even know it was a tabletop RPG until years later when they started doing the Kickstarter for the game that you're talking about. I looked it up and I was like, oh. And was very fascinated about that. Huh, so, that's the thing. Yeah, exactly. That's, oh. Huh. Yeah, I didn't know that. But to get on to our last topic, which is the the top, the big boy, I suppose. I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, we've talked about it in the past, but PlayStation Neo or whatever it was called before is now PlayStation Pro. It's the smaller, more lightweight, supposedly more powerful PlayStation 4, which we don't have much information on the specs just yet. Is it going to uh, be more powerful? 
Supposedly, yes, because it also supports the 4K and HDR, which I'm I'm still trying to find out exactly what that is. I know it's like HD something, but I, I... high dynamic range. Thank yep. you. It, but there it's, is a downside. It's not HD the, of high definition, by the way. The, there is a major downside to this um, PlayStation Plus. Apparently, it would not be able to play 4K Blu-ray. Yeah, sadly. That, that's the weird bit. Is the PlayStation Pro, Pro will not play 4K Blu-rays, which is really weird because one, the the, H, the HD 4K Blu-rays hold more data, which you'd probably want theoretically from a design, from a game development standpoint, let you put more stuff on the disc. Love um, it. Which sounds like the ideal thing you'd want. And second, the pro- X Project Scorpio, not just Project Scorpio, the Xbox X- S. Yeah, the Xbox One Slim, the one that's out now, plays the uh, HD 4K Blu-rays. Yep. And so basically you have a situation now where it... it it doesn't feel like you're getting the extra bang for the buck here. I can sort of understand why they're doing this because part of the plan with Neo is they don't want to split the um, the market share that much, uh, the install base that much. They don't they don't want a 32x or Sega CD style, style situation, or for that matter, if you want to go back looking to like um, PC Engine where you had the all this, the various flavors and upgrades of the PC Engine. Mm-hmm. Um, they want to avoid a situation like that, and I get that, but when you've already gotten Microsoft for several months have been coming out and saying, hey, this Xbox Slim, which is already out in stores, plays HD 4K DVDs, which I believe is technology that Sony owns as well, so they don't even have to pay marketing fees, licensing fees on it. Um, it seems kind of weird. And, and if it was a situation where, like, the the also plan or now Xbox, uh, a PlayStation 4 Slim didn't support HD 4K DVD uh, Blu-rays, but the um, uh, Neo, but the uh, Pro did. I'd, I'd get that too. It, it's, it still seemed like lagging a step behind compared to Microsoft, but that format seems to be what people, what what studios are pushing for in the future. If you're super into the 4K and you you want the super crisp, crystal crystal clear picture on your TV screen kind of situation. Mm. Yeah, but see, yeah. the thing is, is nobody's pushed the Blu-ray to its limit yet. And that was the same thing with DVD when they finished DVDs. Like they never pushed that nor the technology till the end of the system, and that always seems to be the problem with every system that comes out. Nintendo, look at the last line of Nintendo games that came out. They pushed the limit of the system. Fucking Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo. Um, Sony, uh, the PlayStation, PlayStation 2, same thing. They pushed it at the end. The PlayStation 3, they never really pushed because you had a PlayStation 4 out at the same time, so studios weren't really needing to push the technology of the PS3 because they were just moving to the PS4, and I think that's where Sony's thinking is the same idea. They don't want that to happen with their newer systems, but I think it's kind of a smart thing on their side to be like, yeah, hey, we own all the right to this. Here, Microsoft, you pay us a big chunk of your money for this, and, you know, you let us know how your HD DVD turned out. Mm-mm. I think I think this is mostly to do uh, with economic reasons. What I'm saying is that, it, it, the uh, of course, to be able to read the 4K Blu-rays, you need to have a, a, a more expensive uh, laser to be able to do that. And it's probably saying, Sony's just saying, you know what, we're going to probably go, first of all, uh, for a certain price... And, uh, you know, they probably see the numbers, how uh, digital it's way better than physical at this point in terms of uh, people not being able to uh, spend that much money, right? And say, mm-hmm. you know what, we're going to you know, try to make it more, uh, again, cheaper. For that, we'll just foresee the, uh, the uh, new 4K uh, drive. And See, that's that's that that's what it is more than anything else. So my question is: is you guys are saying that the Pro doesn't play 4K, correct? It it it, it displays 4K gameplay video and plays plays 4K streaming, but in like terms Netflix, of the in terms of the particular HD 4K format, uh, Blu-ray format that you have, it, we're seeing these coming out like 
the original Ghostbusters in a 4K Blu-ray release. Um, a couple other movies we've gotten a 4K Blu-ray release. It's a very specific, semi-proprietary, uh, separate format to the standard Blu-ray. And the from the information at on Engadget's coverage of this, the um, 4K, the PlayStation 4 Pro, Pro does not support that particular disc format for currently it's only used for for video as far as for playing movies but the that theoretically could also be used for holding data as well possibly in the future Mm -hmm. and whereas sony's uh, microsoft's playstation one slim which is i believe still going at like the um the, the the price of the old playstation of the old xbox one Mm-hmm. Um, is has that technology included? Presumably, Scorpio, whenever they get announced, will include the same technology as well. Now, looking at the end gadget listings, I will say that the planned uh, MSRP for Pro for the PS4 Pro is the same as the launch price for the PlayStation 4. So I could see what they're going with there. Where okay, this is the is we have the PlayStation 4. Four and the PS4 Slim at a reduced price, in this case significantly re- reduced in the case of the PS4 Slim, and then at the old higher price where it originally launched at, that's what the uh, um, Pro is going to be at. And depending on where Scorpio releases in terms of its price point, which we haven't heard jack shit about yet, mm-hmm. um, that could be at a um, that could be a deciding factor. If the Scorpio's launching at higher than the Xbox One launched at, that could definitely make for a deciding deciding point where, oh, we get a maybe not qu- a boosted performance in 4K gameplay, but maybe not quite as um, much of a big kick as Scorpio. But for a lower price, they might uh, that could be a big deciding factor there when it comes to deciding with the um, the bigger numbers but the smaller price. Yeah, and I'm kind of with Antonio. I'm actually a little bit suspicious as to why Sony would not incorporate that, but Microsoft would when it is kind of their software or hardware in a sense. And Sony is not stupid. They're a they, they're a profitable company at this point. They they've been around for a long time. They make tons of TVs, and you know they made the first Blu-rays. They had the rights. I'm sure they weren't the ones that invented it, but they they grabbed the rights to Blu-ray, so they're the first on the market. So they know something. Either the hardware still needs some work because Microsoft seems to be very gung ho about putting out software that's not always the best. Uh, and the way they did invent the Blu-ray, they did that. Yeah, they patent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. it's not. They, they owned it, it and then they, they went to every. Yeah. They went to every movie company and said, "Hey, here's what we have. Here's our Blu-ray thing." And then H and of course Microsoft the HD DVD they had their stake in that they did right. the same thing and it was Sony who pushed who had Sony Pictures behind them to push the Blu-ray as well as they landed the multi-million deal multi-million deal with Pixar when they backed away from Disney and that sealed the deal that's why fucking mm-hmm. Blu-ray survived okay. if it wasn't for Pixar HD DVD would still be around and porn. Yeah. yeah. Well, and by the way, uh, Sony is notorious for introducing new technologies like that, uh, new mm-hmm. uh, standards. Yep. Yeah. Uh, because they they've been doing that since the uh, since the beginning, pretty much. For like, for instance, uh, Beta, right? They uh, the Beta Max. Yep. Uh, they mm-hmm. were the ones who uh, brought that. Enlighten, yeah. enlighten us, enlighten us, young folk. What a Betamax is? <laughs> yeah, is, is, that, is that little help all right from Big Hero Six? If you guys remember VHS, well, that's the competitor. What the VHS. A VHS had tape, a magnetic tape, where you used to watch movies from. Oh, like have... a like a beta player. <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> and and it was it was actually better. You're going to have to have this conversation with your child. And I realize I do too, because I was talking about, we went to Value Village, which is a a thrift store, Mm -hmm. and she pulled out a bunch of VHSs. And I'm like, we don't have anything that plays that. She goes, well, the PlayStation can play this. No, that's a VHS. I don't have have a VCR. What's a VCR? 
Yeah, what's a and VHS? I, just at her. <laughs> I opened it up. I'm like, see how big this is? It's as big as the PlayStation. <laughs> um, I actually, I actually talked to a um, what was it? a security at the um, GameStop of PS4 launch, and she was telling me a story of how her child was describing this item that somehow plays movies, and she was trying to explain to the child that was a VHS. It's yeah. a tape. Oh, it's, it's hard to believe. But I'm looking at so is the Scorpio the same as the Microsoft One S or no? The no, two separate? No, no they're, they're, they're two separate things. The One S is a is a the slim, smaller version of the Xbox One. You can mount it. You can put it standing on its side. Um, but this 4K, right? It supports 4K upscaling, and it's the main thing is it, so 4K upscaled gameplay. It supports. Um, 4K streaming video through Netflix and Hulu and, all that, and other services that support it. So YouTube 4K. I think Twitch is getting into some 4K stuff too. Um, so there. And it supports mm-hmm. the HD 4K Blu-rays. Um, but it does not... But it... For gameplay, it upscales it. It upscales it because it's taking the standard Xbox One. Um, yeah. From my, from my understanding of the description for how it works, um, it upscales it well, but it ups, it's upscaling the video. <coughs> for Scorpio, games designed for Scorpio will be natively designed to to go out at 4K resolutions. See, my only thing is, is I I used to sell electronics, sell furniture and whatnot, and it's just the 4K seems, and I think Sony might see the same thing in this is a fad like 3D TV was. Hmm. That came out. Everything was 3D. Games were coming out in 3D. You had that ability. And it kind of a flop. And I think it was due to the fact of the cost of the televisions and the cost of that hardware. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at 4K TVs and, you know, it's driving. It's great because it's driving the cost of regular LEDs and LCD TVs down. You know, it's great in that sense, but I don't see spending thirty-four thousand dollars on a ninety-eight inch four K TV where you can That's... spend three thousand on a ninety-eight LED well, inch TV. Uh, why would you why, why, why would I spend a ninety-five inch but yeah, so, fifty five cents is good. <laughs> So other than other than the price, what's your logic for thinking that 4K is not going to stay the norm? 3D TVs. Well, here my counter argument to that is with 3D TVs, they never had really pulled off glasses-free 3D TVs. They and, did. And, well, hmm. they, they did. LG LG had the glasses-free 3D TV, but they, and they also had the non portal portalized one as well which were just the regular glasses that you get from the movie theater instead of the powered ones like everyone else had. So they had two different versions. That you, I know this because I sold them. And, you know, but they were expensive. They were fucking ridiculous in price. Yeah. Well, I, I disagree that that's the reason that they didn't sell. I think the reason they didn't sell is because, one, 3D itself is kind of a gimmick. It's not a, a everyday sort of thing. Whereas clear TV, clear resolution yeah. is completely different. I, I and, have and, one. It's fantastic. And and, and, and to, to continue counting on this is, is like I believe the like the the, the glasses free ones they still had a kind of limited viewing angle that you had. Whereas with the four K TVs, it to play devil's advocate here is you can you don't need glasses. You don't need to be able to the limited range of your room to get the most out of the four K display to see the difference. And it also makes for it makes for a better showroom experience for selling it, and it makes for if you're having people over at your house to watch the Super Bowl, to watch movies on your on Frank's two thousand inch TV or what have you, you can you you get you can show it off. You can have that experience showing it off to your friends better because if somebody goes gets up to get popcorn or is coming back from the bathroom, they will see the different. They'll be seeing the picture right away. You won't have that transition moment where you're moving into the acceptable viewing radius, and I potentially 
as the technology sticks around for a while, if it sticks around for a while, naturally, the price will go down, as it does with most things. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. And to, to kind of go a little further, it's like saying, why get this color TV when I have this black and white TV that works perfectly fine and is cheaper? Why get this, you know, uh, this... We all know why TV? the states came up with color TVs. What? It was in the 50s. You know exactly why they went to color. They just didn't want to see blacks on their TV. <laughs> yes, that's that's exactly what I mean. Exactly no, no, but I want to, I want, I want to, I want to fight that point in okay. the sense of the human eye can only pick up so much resolution, and these 4K TVs are curved. So you're talking about oh, being able to walk that, in. That's not one percent true. Only some TVs are curved. I'm talking about the expensive ones. All the expensive ones are these curved ones, right? The curved, the curved ones are stupid for one. Well, exactly, right? <laughs> and that's stupid. what I'm getting at. But not all the 4K TVs are curved, though. No, I, no. I can, exactly. And, and is, I can see the curved not, ones being a gimmick that goes away. Well, we'll see. But the the other point is that the human eye can only pick up X amount of resolution. You know, the yes, you can get clear, clear imaging, but all you have to do is pick up the hertz of the TV. Like, when you go to the 280 or 300 hertz TVs, your eye can't even pick that up. Your eye quits at 120 hertz. Or, in some cases, people in 2020 vision can pick up the 200 hertz. You can't see anything clearer than that. So, when you're selling TVs that are 400 hertz or 600 hertz, you're never going to see that. You're not going to see that. And that was, you know, again... You know, selling points is oh look, it's six seven hundred hertz. Your eye can only pick up one hundred eighty at most. Some uh, eyes two hundred. Well, uh, my, on. my kind of point for that is for, for, on the hertz point is we're talking pixel density versus uh, frequency of refresh between between the frequency of the uh, of frame rate, for lack of a better term. And like for some cases, you don't want the necessary the necessary the, the faster frequency. If I'm what you want this, you want the more frames per second. If I'm playing, if I'm watching a movie, I don't want 60 frames per second on a movie. I want the frame rate that the movie was filmed on, because otherwise it looks, particularly with, with computerized interpolation, for example, it looks weird and unnatural. Hmm. He likes. I gotta so say, the, the uh, color TV, <laughs> color TV. Invented by a Mexican, by the way. Hey, good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. There are. Uh, we did have some know. comment. Um, more you know. <laughs> yeah, he the said blog. they are four Ks at lower cost, which is true. I did not pay over a thousand for mine. There you go. I what got size is it? Fifty-five inch. That's not bad. What make? Samsung. Oh, that's crap. Samsung's Dang. fantastic. Sick burn. <laughs> Dude, I I my little um by the way, my little cords that I don't I got from Kickstarter. Um actually I said I said saw the business card. I tossed it. So anyway. Anyways, <laughs> hang on. Tavian had a question or he had some of them about the comments. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Oh before yeah, we all, the person, before we all jumped on you. Um he was reading that. Soul Vlog said that uh what he was saying was that there's a lower cost that you can get those TVs for. So, oh. but yeah, I, I do. I think you make a great point. I, I, however, sadly, marketing is is better than logic, <laughs> um, and people love to toot their own horns and they like to have the nicest things in the house. So one, the I can't remember what they're called, but the first buyers, the people who buy things first, they're first they're gonna, adopters? huh? First adopters. First adopters? Yes. Thank you, thank you. First adopters, they're going to probably get these things because they people love to do this. You know, I mean, same thing with Apple. I mean, you could argue that Apple makes great products. I, I don't think they're anything revolutionary personally, but people love the idea of it. Granted, there's a better marketing story behind that, which is a lot more of the reason why people buy it. But I think there's going to be a lot of first adopters who get this, and then eventually it's going to be the norm. You already see people trying to incorporate it everywhere, not just the TVs, but the technology itself is being put in everywhere. Uh, I think there's already like 4K porn out. So, yay! 
<laughs> well, of course, porn, porn is always out of avant garde. Yeah, yeah. I always, need more. Always. I need more. I need more video game porn. I need to interact <laughs> more. That Overwatch porn is too strong. Yeah, but I can't play those. I have to sit there and watch it. He wants interactivity, man. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have that too, I'm sure. I VR, like... man. VR. And uh, I... some, some mechanical toys. Oh, God. VR Tell porn. Dildonics. That's already a thing, actually, I think. Mm-hmm. And then, again, we can, we can case in point the VR televisions or the headset TVs that came out. And that was a fad. And that didn't last that. long. Uh, or Sony had those TVs that you wore almost like VR. You put them over your head, had the speakers. It was almost like the Morpheus, but it was TV. Huh. They had those. They were pushing those really hard. And then that came and gone because we had the Samsung ones. We had the Sony ones. We had uh, some cheap RCA knockoff. And there's a fad that died. Because they're like, oh, look, it's like a portable TV. You can take it anywhere. And you had it on your face. And, you know, it was cool. <laughs> it was, you know, and they were comfortable. And you could play video games on it as well. But, boom, it's gone now, right? So. Uh, uh, I didn't even know about that one. Actually, was... actually I think um, Old about uh, sent me a link to one before. So, hey, EB get games. this. Or, sorry, go ahead. I would say a motorbike did send me a link to, I believe, one of them. He said, hey, get this. I can watch TV. Yeah, um, <laughs> Sony um, had a whole deal out with EB Games at GameStop to where they had those TVs hooked up to where one person could wear the headset and play one player, and the player two could use the TV and have their full screen on their TV. Mm. That was a whole selling point. And the uh, EB games at GameStop sold them as a package. You get the TV and the headset and all that jazz for $500. Mm. It was like a 24 inch TV. And they had this for close to a year. And then it kind of went, you know, and that's the same thing that with uh, 3d TV and, you know, I think the gimmick of 4k, but if the 4k ends up jacking up prices for DVDs and stuff like that, I can see it being Mm. an issue. But if they're staying around the same price, then it might do good. Hmm. And I think that was the big difference between Blu-ray when it first came out with HD DVD is Blu-ray started being able to come out cheaper. Hmm. And now look at them. They have a $5 bin of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's everything with technology. But I think I'm going to pass that question on to the viewer, which is, one, what do you guys think of 4K TVs? Do you agree with Jared that it's kind of a fad and it's just going to die off? Or do you think this is going to become the new standard until something else better takes its place? And I think I'll leave that with leave you guys with that question. I'm going to go down the line here and let you know where everyone could be found, um, starting with Alex. Well, I can be found at youtube.com slash user slash count zero O-R. That's count Z-E-R-O-O-R. Um, latest video that's up is my review of Dragon Age Inquisition. Right. Which is great, by the way. I watched it today. Good job. I'll have to check that out. Next, we have Antonio. Yeah, well, you can find me at YouTube at Ocala Retorizer, Ocala G-O-K-A-D-I-D-O. Twitter at Ocalito G-O. K-A-D-I-T-O, and of course the console right. And it'll have a video out at sometime this year. Well, sometime, <laughs> sometime 2016, we'll have another video. You're cutting mm-hmm. it close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we have yeah. Tyler. Well, you can find me on YouTube, the Video Game Hunter 32. Oh, you can type in Hot Anime 32. They'll both take you to the same channel. And uh, I did upload a new video to my channel a couple of days ago. It's my FanaFest video. Check it out. And right. I, I also got done with a drawing. I finally got done with the drawing. Uh, no. You can check that out on Demon Art. It's a pickle. And <laughs> cosplaying as the May from Overwatch. A nice Yes. Noise. That, that and- and- Oh, I've got to say one more thing. And if you're a furry, you can find me on furzoo.com, video game hunter. <laughs> there you go. And yep. look at that look at that camera. Look how crystal clear he looks. What kind of camera is that, by the way? That is a 1080p Logitech camera. <laughs> I, 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 I was hoping to find maybe it t- tell me something else, but that's all it says right there. I <laughs> don't remember what you bought. Well, give me a. Uh, give He's me balling, a, it's a. It's a Logitech HD Pro webcam. C. 
Aw920. Oh, okay, cool. Nice. And then, Jared, do you have anything to add on? Of course. Make sure you check us out on our YouTube. Make sure you check out on our Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Make sure you join our Twitch. We stream every day on our Twitch channel. Have chances to win some great prizes and gifts and things and wonderful stuff. And remember, we will never leave you unfulfilled with our website. We will always give you the most content, the best content, upfront, free of charge, no DLC, a full product released right away so you don't feel like you have Street Fighter V Syndrome. <laughs> uh, hashtag Pokonami. <laughs> and of course, I am your host, The Philosopher. You can find me on Facebook.com slash The Philosopher. YouTube and Twitter at Philosopher. YouTube.com slash Philosopher. And of course, on the console explosion.com, as well as all of the people like he just said. Let us know what you guys thought down below about the question that I just asked you about Blu-ray, video, 4K, and, and all the like. And also, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, and share with all the other nerds so we can get that conversation going. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one.